Who is this guy? And what the heckles is going on here? Let's find out. Immersed Robot Ivan Sutherland was born in 1938 and is a central pioneer in computer graphics, as well as having an interest in various other technological innovations. Version of the walking program. The first two versions used the legs in a fixed sequence. This his notable work really begins in 1962, where he created a computer program called the Sketchpad while studying at MIT. The program pioneered human-computer interaction, object-oriented programming language, and was the first program to use a graphical user interface. It is considered to be the predecessor of modern-day CAD software. This picture is a master. Mm -hmm. I call up a copy of it and I can manipulate it locally. I can reduce it, magnify it, I can rotate it. And let me place it right there. And I can do this several times. This is, of course, very instrumental for repetitive drawings like circuit diagrams or bridge bays. Well, we have several repetitive structures. Oh. It wasn't long before Sutherland's computer graphics innovations led him to conceive of a device which would merge the digital and physical world and dramatically alter how people would interact with computers. He wrote an essay regarding this in 1965, in which he said, quote, a display connected to a digital computer gives us a chance to gain familiarity with concepts not realizable in the physical world. It is a looking glass into a mathematical wonderland." End quote. At the time of writing this essay, it was plain to see the rudimentary nature in which computer graphics currently resided in. Sutherland describes wireframe depictions, but then goes on to mention how colored areas are possible too. Within the essay, he also talks about various types of displays and human-computer interaction peripherals, such as force feedback controllers. Towards the end of the essay, Sutherland even describes how future representations of technology could actually manipulate matter in and out of existence at will. Quote, the ultimate display would, of course, be a room within which the computer can control the existence of matter. A chair displayed in such a room would be good enough to sit in. Handcuffs displayed in such a room would be confining, and a bullet displayed in such a room would be fatal. With appropriate programming, such a display could literally be the wonderland into which Alice walked. And the computer figures out where the lines should appear and where they should. While this more extreme concept was envisioned back in 1965, it wasn't until 1968 that Sutherland, together with a number of his students, created a rudimentary head-mounted display. While I use the term, rudimentary, in today's context, this device was truly state-of-the-art back in 1968, pushing computer-generated graphics to the very limit of available resources. The head-mounted display was comprised of two CRT monitors with mirrors and prisms, which allowed digital wireframe graphics to be superimposed over the real world. This concept is of course much closer to modern-day ambitions for augmented reality glasses than actual VR headsets, but the technology is closely related. In order to provide suitable six degrees of freedom tracking, Sutherland mounted three ultrasonic transmitters on the headset which each used different frequencies. These were picked up by four receivers which hung from the ceiling. Powering all of this was a series of cables which resided inside a metallic tube also suspended from the ceiling. This obtrusive and imposing looking device was given the name, the Sword of Damocles. The computer which processed all of this was the 1959 PDP-1, or Program Data Processor 1. This also happens to be the computer on which Steve Russell created what many consider to be the very first video game, Space War, in 1962. While these head-mounted display experiments cemented Sutherland's reputation as the grandfather of modern-day VR, it seems that they didn't develop too far beyond the sword of Damocles. Sutherland, together with one of the students who helped develop the device, Bob Sproul, founded a consulting firm in 1980 called Sutherland, Sproul & Associates. The Sword of Damocles remains an interesting curiosity in the long road to modern-day virtual and augmented reality. It has its place firmly fixed in the echelons of retro virtual reality hardware and its creators were, of course, among the true pioneers of the concept. Well that's pretty much it for this video. Please hesitantly tap the like button, and if it's not too much of an inconvenience, then please also subscribe to this channel for more VR-focused content.
I'll see you all on the flippity flip.